this video did not come with a box of tissues for your uh, tears that you'll get when you do that. Now that your sky and your still water is laid in nice and cleanly, what I'd like to show you how to do now is do one or two types of clouds that Bob most commonly did on the episodes, and we're gonna use a fan brush to get those going. Okay, so you'll need some titanium white paint, which you'll see that I have over here on my palette. Um, I've also thrown in a couple of colors that you will also commonly see artists attempt to use. Um, a black, which I don't suggest go in your sky. And in this case over here, we have uh, Bob Ross's uh, Midnight Black, okay? Um, this is an okay thing sometimes to use in clouds because it's actually a very dark lavender. And most of the time when you see clouds in the sky, if you really paid attention to what the shadows look like, those things are normally some variation of blue or lavender, okay? So Bob's Midnight Black is actually a very, very deep lavender. Highly recommend uh, using, but just a touch. I recommend using it, but just a touch, okay? So um, also, most times you will not, uh, in, in your paintings, want to go directly to a straight titanium white. Um, Bob often did it though, very smartly, because he knew he was operating on a, a wet canvas where that blue paint from his sky was automatically gonna mix and kind of dull down the brightness of that titanium white. If you are allowing your uh, sky and your water to dry before doing the, your clouds on top of them, which is an absolutely fine technique, and I talk about that more in our advanced classes, um, but not so much here since we're doing wet on wet technique in the Bob Ross style. If you allowed that sky to dry and your water to dry and you're, you're putting in your clouds over that sky, I do recommend you dulling your paint down with some other color. Sometimes you might want to put a little tinge of peach in it, okay, if it's more like a, sun, a sunset uh, clouds, a sunset light will whack in those clouds. Um, or you might want to uh, put in a bright red. Sun rises, great. Put a little touch of red in there, but just a touch because you don't want it to eat up your whole world. You just want a little bit of color in that titanium white just to knock off that super bright whiteness. Uh, you won't find another color that's brighter than titanium white and you also don't want those, that color to just jump right off on your canvas. It will become the bright spot in your, in your painting and it will really be kind of off-putting, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Since I know that I have a semi-wet canvas here uh, from my titanium white paint, now realize that I didn't put a ton of paint on my canvas so I don't have a lot of blue to mix in there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna take this fan brush and the way that I'm gonna load my fan brush is to not do what I see a lot of times people do in class where they just start gobbing on paint. I'm gonna take this paint brush, okay, clean on both sides and I'm gonna just load the paint down at the end of the bristles of this brush, just a little bit, little bit up. Uh, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna rotate my brush down to, I don't know, maybe a 45 degree angle or so, maybe it's a little higher than that, but but like that, and I'm just gonna tap and then pull down a little bit of paint. Now you see I've got some paint down here at the bottom, right? I'm then gonna flip that paint over. I'm gonna load this side of the brush too. And the reason for that, even though I told you that we're gonna be painting with the bottom of that brush, heck, in the middle of the, the cloud, we can flip that brush over when we start running out of paint. Okay, so if you are a right-handed person, okay, um, you're gonna hold your brush uh, in your right hand and you're gonna rotate that until that the point Right till the point of this uh, of this brush um, touches, you know, is points toward that canvas. Okay, so right around here ish. If you're a lefty like me, I'm a left-handed guy, so I'm going to paint this left-handed today. But technique really doesn't matter which hand you hold. I'm going to point this corner uh, to to my brush. Now the important thing here is that uh, the, we talked about before that you're going to paint with either, you know, that you're going to bend the bristles of the brush. In this case, we're actually going to top with the uh, paint with the top of the brush the way that I'm going to show you here because I'm going to show you how to rotate this brush so we paint with that. Um, you're going to um, not do what you think that you see Bob doing, okay? You think that you see Bob on the episode because he's going so fast doing these big circles, right? So I will tell people in class all the time, hey, don't do these big circles because that's not what Bob was doing. And what do you think that I see immediately after I say that? That's what I see, okay? So what I'm, what I'm gonna tell you here is that Bob is using the corner of the brush and he's bending it down so that if it was upside down, it would look like a little puppy dog here, right? And so you, he's just kind of pushing up, so a little um, upward oomph, okay? A little upward push. These bristles will bend downward and, the, and, the, and this paint from the top of the brush will touch that canvas. And then you're really, when on that spinning, you're just kind of relieving that pressure off to move it into a new position so you can push up again, okay? 
a little word uh, of, of caution to you. If you do the big spins, what's gonna happen is that paint is gonna just mix with that blue back there and you're gonna have all kinds of trouble. Uh, you're gonna have little, little, as Bob would call them, cotton balls in the sky or you're just gonna keep blending your paint until it goes away and you just have this little uh, mess of, of white paint up there and you're gonna say, it doesn't look like clouds, Brian. Okay, I get ya, I hear ya. So here's a little tip. If you can't do the very quick uh, motion that I'm gonna show you here, it, that's okay. I'm gonna show you another way that you can do it in absolute slow motion. It's the exact same technique that Bob does, except it's just really slow. And there's nothing wrong with going slow, folks. There's, this is not a race. You're not trying to paint your painting in 27 minutes like Bob, so you can do it this way. Okay, so back to the, uh, the brush technique here. We've, we've taken our brush and we've rotated it so that no matter which hand you are, until the corner of your brush is pointed toward the canvas. So righties would be here, lefties would be here. Okay, it's very much uh, this simple. You decide where your clouds are going to live. Realize that, you know, you may have mountains or trees or whatever in the sky. So just kind of plan around your composition for your painting. And you're going to take that, that point of that brush. And I'm going to do this in slow motion first, right? You're going to take the, your brush and you're going to just kind of push upward, right? And you're going to relieve that pressure and kind of come around in a semicircle. And you're going to push up again and again and again. And you're going to change you're going to raise and lower your shoulder so that you can change the angle of that brush attack and i'm not really spinning this brush i'm kind of running out of paint on that corner so i'm flipping my brush over so i can get at it again and i'm just going to kind of gently pop in right some really pretty happy little clouds and maybe i'm going to come down here and kind of make this guy a little bit a little bigger, let's kind of make him a little more random, right? Because see how I've got symmetry here? You don't want that, okay? So you want to, I'm going to reload my brush. And I'm going to just kind of take out some of that symmetry by putting, applying a little bit more paint. Ah, there we go. Now they all don't look the same. Okay, now we just have a nice, happy little cloud up in that sky. So, but we're not done yet, okay? So that's, that's one way. So. Uh, again, in, in slow motion for a moment, and then I'll spin it up. So we're just gonna be pushing upward. That, that, that brush is gonna bend and it's gonna put paint up on your canvas. You're gonna take that rotation off and the pressure off your canvas, and you're gonna push up again and up and up. And I'm changing the angle of my arm so that we do it. Okay, so I promised you that I would show you that if you can't do it that way in, fa fast, in a fast way, that I would show you another way to do it. So I've got this little cloud started and maybe I'm having a little bit of trouble. So let's just say that I'm a little struggling with this technique and I don't wanna do it anymore because we've all been there, folks. And we, you don't come out a perfect painter right from the get-go, so you have a learning curve. And there are some things that you do, some techniques that you don't like that cause you some frustration. So instead of trying to fight that frustration, here's how you do it. Just do it a little slower Take the same same motion, but don't feel like you've got to you know spin and do your cloud in 30 seconds like Bob. Why not just kind of kind of think about it and push that paint where you want it? So you can think, oh well, maybe that doesn't look right. Maybe I want to fill that in a little bit and push that over there. And oh, okay. So you can do these clouds slower and still be doing them the Bob Ross way. Okay, you can very literally push paint wherever you want it to be, okay? And just change the angle. The important thing, that's the, the important thing, is to change the angle of that brush so that it doesn't get all kinds of symmetry in it. And then in the next couple of steps on these clouds, you're gonna see that this cloud is also going to work for you, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of spin in a little bit more down here. Yeah, so we've got some really interesting, strange looking clouds and that's okay, because they're gonna be perfect sitting around by the mountain. Okay, so I'm gonna put this fan brush down now, and what I'm gonna do now is grab, um, you know, you can use a one inch brush, a two inch brush. I happen to have two, uh, two inch brushes handy, so I'm gonna use the two inch brush, but by all means, um, you know, use a one inch brush if it's easier for you to control. Heck, frankly, you could even use a filbert brush, okay, if you want the filbert brush. To, uh, to give you a little more control. There's nothing wrong with using a filbert brush to, to, to do the next steps. Um, I'm gonna use this, this larger uh, two inch brush because frankly, I like the fact that it's got a whole bunch of bristles on there um, and it's reasonably soft. Um, and so that I can just kind of, you know, 
massage these clouds a little bit, okay? So this is another thing that I want to caution you about when you're doing this next step on these clouds, because these clouds are only step one of, of four steps to being finished. We've got the initial paint on there. Um, what I want to caution you about though is again, we're not doing big circles. It looks like Bob is doing big circles on here, but he's not. What he's doing is he is using just a few bristles at the top of this brush, okay? And then he's just gonna kinda, I'm gonna spin it on my finger like this. He's not spinning those bristles, he's jiggling the brush around, but it's really, look how little movement is in those bristles that are touching my finger. They're, they're actually just kinda dancing around, so they're sitting on the canvas and they're kind of doing this a little bit. And what that's doing is that's smoothing out the paint. It's polishing it just a smidgen, I mean, just a smidgen. And what you'll see in Bob's movement, his circling, is that he's moving into the next position to jiggle it a little bit. So it looks like he's doing these big old circles um, and that brush is actually moving underneath my hand, but this part of the brush is not touching the canvas. It's only this little teeny, teeny tiny part up here and that's just jiggling back and forth, okay? So, uh, step two, we're gonna do step two real fast and then uh, we'll be back and show you how to do the, uh, the other two uh, steps to finish off your clouds and uh, I think that you'll be very, very happy. Okay, so let me, um, let me come over here. It's a little, little easier um, to show you. We're gonna start here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna start blending out the bottom of this cloud using just those top bristles of the brush. See, I've got my handle rotated out so that the rest of the brush is not touching. And all I'm gonna do is come in here and kind of jiggle and spin out just a little bit the base of this cloud. And I'm moving into the next position rather than using big O circles. And see what's, see what's happening down here? See how this is much more distinct here? And this is starting to blend into the background color that we had applied. And so that's kind of bl blended in with that cloud. And what it's doing is, is it's starting to give us the, our, the first little bit of a three-dimensional effect. It's pushing that into the background as if that is further away from us. And the top part of your cloud is closer to us. Um, so this helps us get the illusion of depth and dimension in our painting. So as I kind of kind of just jiggle those, those bristles at the bottom of my cloud, you'll see I'm starting to make it move away. Plus, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, dulling some of the, the kind of sharper marks that were in those clouds. See how this one kind of kind of starting to fade away a little bit, okay? The other thing that you can do, which I think is fantastic, is to come up here a little bit and dance these little things up around here so that we get a little, some parts of it are a little more distinct than others. Some kind of fade back into the distance a little bit. And that again, gives you much, much more depth and dimension in your clouds. You don't have to do it all. Just don't destroy the top edge of your cloud. And here in this case, I got a little mark up there that I kind of want to blend into it. So I'm going to, I'm going to pop that one a little bit. I'm going to come down here, just kind of smooth these out. I'm going to wipe off the, that excess paint onto my brush real fast so that I can come back into it. But right here, we've got a nice looking little cloud that's sitting out in our sky. So let's do the same thing over here. So this is the, the brush that we did with the kind of, I mean the cloud that we did with the, the much uh, slower technique with the brush. But we just finish this and do this the same. We, the next step is exactly the same. I'm just gonna spin this out. And we're gonna be good here, okay. All right, so just the same thing, just kind of wiggle and jiggle that brush just a little bit. And hey, a little pro tip for you here, folks. You know, I realize that this is a kind of a Bob Ross wet on wet technique, and so people think that you need to, to finish this uh, painting in one sitting. Um, but you may have noticed that my clothes changed. Um, well, that's because I actually did the first section of this video last night. So, you know, this, this, this background paint and this, uh, and this water has, has actually been sitting overnight. And so it started to get, uh, is firming up a little bit and it actually makes putting your clouds in so much easier. I highly recommend if you've got the time and you don't have to finish a painting in one sitting, why do it? I mean, why, why do it? Um, really just take your time and, and, you know, spend a couple of weeks working layer on layer on a, on a painting. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can apply the Bob Ross techniques in most cases to all elements of your painting over a period of time. The only thing you would have to do is re-wet your canvas. Um, if you need something to, to kind of blend, you know, you could put a little linseed oil or something on there to make your canvas slick again in certain areas where you might need to, to blend. Make, maybe you're making reflections in the water, so you maybe, maybe your water is dry. Eh, just put a little linseed oil in there and you're going to be 
good to go, okay? And I'll teach you things like that in some of our other courses, not necessarily in this one, but in other courses, I'll show you how to do uh, things like that. And heck, you might even see something like that pop up on one of our free videos on our YouTube, Rumble, Gab TV channel, or on our TV uh, channel on our website. You'll see those things uh, pop up in there. Okay, so I'm done with step number two for these clouds, okay? So um, get that done. Uh, and then we'll be back in just a moment and I'll show you how to kind of finish up those clouds. But take your time, pause the video, wait for the next uh, section after, uh, after you get your section of the clouds looking really nice. Uh, so far, these are looking pretty good. I hope you like them. I actually really like them. So uh, I think we're going to finish these off great. I'll see you in just a second. Well, wasn't that fun? So, so far, we've got a great great start to our clouds. Now let's finish these off with two very, very simple final steps. We're gonna, it's gonna take a, a larger brush. It could be a one inch brush. It could be your two inch brush. It could be a blender brush. It could be a, 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 a round or a half round brush if you're sticking with the Bob Ross uh, inventory of brushes, which I hope that you are because you know, Bob was good to all of us. Let's, let's support his company. Um, I'm going to stick with the Bob Rosh two inch brush here because again, for the same reasons, I like it. It's got lots of bristles. It's nice and soft. It's very easy for me to use. Um, and it's great for this technique because it just kind of feels good in my hand. And so it's got a lot of weight to it. So I just, I'm going to use that. It's handy. All right. And I like it. So I've wiped out the excess paint out of that brush from when we were spinning out the bottoms of our clouds just to make sure that I don't get any additional stray marks on my canvas, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to, uh, you know, hey, here, how do I hold my brush, Brian? Well, here's how you hold it uh, to get this thing. Hold, I would recommend that you hold it back at the handle, the, at the very end of the handle. The reason for that is, believe it or not, is because you lose a little bit of control and it's a little bit easier to, to get very little pressure on the canvas. We don't want to, to heavy hand this canvas on these clouds and, and, and grab the paint that's in our clouds and then move them across the canvas because that will upset you to no end. And um, this video did not come with a box of tissues for your uh, tears that you'll get when you do that. Uh, if you've ever taken a class or watched one of the videos with Karen, Karen has a great way of explaining it. Um, when you're touching, this is the canvas, if my hand is the canvas, um, as, and my brush, is like it's coming across that canvas very gently like a butterfly kiss, right? So most of you have had people who have had butterflies land on your skin. You can barely feel them, if anything, right? So, so just across, up and across and away is how we're going to be doing this, up and across and away. And we're going to be kind of doing it in kind of a semi-circle motion, all right, up and through those clouds and then away from the canvas, okay? So uh, we're going to blend out the tops of these clouds to make them just super, super, super pretty. Bob called this fluffing, you know, fluffing the, uh, the clouds. So let's fluff up the clouds a little bit, okay? So again, holding that back, I'm using the sides of the bristles of my brush, not the ends, okay? The sides of the bristles of the brush. And I'm going to kind of come up, because I'm a lefty, I'm going to come this way. If you're a righty, you can come this way. It, it doesn't really matter. You can come at it actually from several different directions, and that's okay. So I'm just going to come up and through. So again, up, through, and away. I'm just going to kind of gently, very, very gently, as gently as I possibly can, all right, fluff these clouds, okay? Now, if you start picking up paint on your brush, which I got just a smidgen of it, then you can just wipe it off and go right back to it, okay? Now, the important thing here is that I'm not doing, you notice that I'm not doing a lot of damage to these clouds. I'm just kind of softening them, making them look like a, maybe there's a little wind blowing through them, so there's a little bit of movement in them, okay? And I'm not, I'm just not applying a whole lot of pressure now. As you see whether or not your clouds are actually fluffing, right, you can adjust your pressure. It's one of those things that, you know, when you're doing it in a class with, with me and you've only got four hours to complete the entire painting, a lot of times, you know, we're kind of, we're moving quickly through these elements, so you don't have enough time to really analyze what you're doing. And this is a perfect, this video is a perfect opportunity for you to take one element at a time and get it right. Take your time. You've got all the time in the world, uh, you know, at your home, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like you don't have life responsibilities, you know what I, but you know what I mean. You've got an unlimited time. You're not under a time constraint of an instructor trying to rush you through a particular, um, you know, a particular technique on a particular painting. So I got a little hair here. I'm going to try to lift off. There we go. Got it. All right. So when that happens, I kind of destroyed my mount, my uh, cloud right there. I'm just going to kind of 
fluff right over that and just kind of blend back that little, you know, left a little mark where the hair was, you know, so now that's gone. Okay, so that's all there is to this, this current step here. I'm gonna wipe out that brush. And then the last step is also pretty simple. It's very simply, it's, it's similar technique, except we're gonna kind of take out our brush strokes that we did. So we're gonna use the sides of the bristles of the brush. And just like we did for the water down here below in the, in the previous uh, part of the video, we are going to take this and just very gently brush straight across. You can brush back and forth if you'd like, if this is, if it's easier for you to do it one way like this, that's great. But essentially we're just gonna just take out those extra brush marks and it will kind of finish off those clouds. Now, our clouds here look a lot different than when we started, folks. These now look like they've got some depth because the bottoms of them look like they're a little bit further away. And now we can see the fronts of these clouds coming forward, okay? So that's how you do some very, very basic clouds. Now, there are a lot of other ways to do clouds. Matter of fact, there is as many ways to do clouds as there are artists. We all do our own clouds a different way, but this is a very fast, easy way to get your clouds in. And they, they look wonderful, okay? Um, to, you know, come to us uh, for another uh, advanced clouds video um, where we show you non-Bob Ross techniques in order how to, how to, to do some amazing, beautiful clouds, including very uh, distinct storm clouds, very, very bright, sunny day, puffy clouds. We will teach you how to do all kinds of things. But this is a great, great way to get yourself started on getting your clouds and to get them right. And once you get these right, you know, explore all those other ways to do your clouds because I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Clouds end up becoming an enormous amount of fun once you figure out how to do them and keep in mind you don't always have to use the fan brush like Bob did sometimes Bob would use large brushes like this he would use filbert brush he would use all kinds of other things on the episodes but his most traditional way is the way that I showed you which is with with that fan brush but keep in mind uh, for the non Bob Ross uh, courses we will show you a lot of other ways to do them with a lot of different brushes and we hope that you'll come back to us to see those all right so I think that we've gotten you your sky your water and a, and a couple of ways to do clouds in there. Uh, at, and I really, really appreciate you hanging out with me for this day. I hope that we've got you a great start on your painting. On the next episode, we're going to show you how to, to nail those mountains and we're going to nail them in a really epic way. So I'll see you for episode two, which will be mountains.